How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 4 in this video series where I show you how to get a leap motion motion sensor to interact with a Raspberry Pi. Now if we go into Eclipse, in the last tutorial we uh, created these instance variables, we did our onConnect method, and we started the onFrame method where uh, we right now have the uh, motion sensor um, following the uh, tip position of the index finger and then um, we uh, have the uh, thumb when the thumb is not extended then that's when a click occurs so uh, only thing I forgot to do with the index finger is we want to update the position on our Raspberry Pi so update position and we're going to pass in as our parameter this finger position dot to string. All right. So that was the only thing I forgot to do in the last video. Now, in this video, we're going to be going over what to do when a circle gesture is detected and when a swipe gesture is detected. So let's do that now. Um, let me just turn to that spot in my notes. Okay. So we're going to start by going over the circle gesture. So, we're done with this uh, finger for loop. The next thing we got to do is a for loop uh, for each gesture. So, for gesture g colon and then frame dot gestures. So the frame.gestures method returns a gestures list. For each one of these gestures, we want to check if it's a circle gesture or if it's a swipe gesture. Now the only two gestures we have enabled are the circle gesture and the swipe gesture. So that's all the cases we have to uh, check for. So if g.type equals equals gesture.type dot type underscore circle so if it is a circle gesture then we're going to create a circle gesture object um, called circle and we're going to set it equal to a new circle gesture object and we're going to pass in our gesture g as a parameter so uh, G is just a general gesture object. A circle gesture has unique methods, so we have to, you know, create a circle gesture object to use those methods. All right. Now that we know, or so now that we know it's a circle gesture and we've created a circle gesture object, we're going to determine if it is counterclockwise or clockwise. So if it's clockwise then we're going to scroll down. If it's counterclockwise, we're going to scroll up. So, for that, we're going to do an if statement. If circle dot pointable dot angle to oops, angle to and what we're going to pass in is circle dot normal. Circle dot normal returns a vector uh, the normal vector for your uh, for the position where um, the position in which the gesture detected the normal vector for that position all right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if it's less than or equal to math dot pi uh, pap uh, capital P and capital I divided by 4 so, what does all this uh, jibber-jabber mean? Well, if it is in fact less than or equal to math.pi divided by 4, then we know that it is clockwise that our circle gesture is going. So in that case, we're going to call our scroll down method. And the only other thing I want to do after that is a try-catch block. So when it scrolls down 
each time we want to sleep the thread for 50 milliseconds. So thread dot sleep 50 uh, yep semicolon and then we're going to do our catch. So catch exception E all right, and that's it. So why are we sleeping our thread? Well, one circle gesture has so many states. Every little bit around the circle, a circle gesture object is going to be getting created. So it would be scrolling down too fast. So that's why we give it a little bit of sleep so that way it scrolls down slower. Now, we got an error here. I've noticed that for a bit. I'm just... Um, oh, okay, I know what the problem is. So it's dot pointable dot direction first okay so dot direction then dot angle too okay that fixes that so if it's clockwise scroll down else we want to scroll up so else scroll up we'll call that method and then same thing we're gonna do this try catch block where we sleep our string for 50 milliseconds. Uh, sorry, I meant sleep our thread. Um, Alright, so that takes care of our circle gesture. So now we got to do an else if all the way out here. So else if it's a swipe gesture. So I'm just going to copy all the code inside these brackets. And all I'm going to do is change it from type underscore circle to type underscore swipe. All capital letters. Alright, so this is our other condition if we have a swipe gesture. So all we want to do in this case is determine the state. And when it's at the end of the swipe, that's when we are going to do um, call our swipe method that we have. So what we got to do for that is if g dot state equals equals state dot state underscore stop with all capital letters well then we are going to call our swipe method now why are we only doing it when the gesture is over because um, if we called every time a swipe gesture was detected that method would be called you know you know two three hundred times maybe within the course of that single swipe so we only want to call it when the swipe is over alright so once we do that we are going to do another one of these uh, sleep statements except for we're going to sleep it for half a second so add an extra zero on the end of that fifty alright so that takes care of our two gestures what time are we at? Alright, I'm going to leave it there for this video. The next video, we're going to go over connecting and disconnecting from the server. But for now, that's all I got for you guys. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.